Today's top stories. One more year, Congress votes to grant an extension of martial law in Mindanao. The military says indigenous groups who lack awareness of the new people's army's actions are being targeted by communist rebels. An election reform advocate slams the alleged ambush to slay of his close aide by policemen. And the Bureau of Immigration bans a tourist dependent on drugs from entering the country. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Moroto. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Congress voted today to extend the implementation of martial law in Mindanao for another year. Lawmakers cited the continued need to quell rebellion and terrorism in Mindanao to justify the extension. More on this from Ram Dulfo. Congress has overwhelmingly voted to extend martial law in Mindanao. In a joint session, the Senate and the House of Representatives granted President Rodrigo Duterte's request for the extension of martial law and suspension of the privilege of writ of habeas corpus from January 1 to December 31, 2019. A total of 235 members of Congress voted to approve the motion, while only 28 voted against it. Only one voted for abstention. Twelve senators voted in favor, five were against it, and only one abstained. 223 House representatives approved the motion and 23 rejected it. No congressman abstained. Majority Leader Lando Andaya Jr. said the House bans the decision on the security assessment submitted by the military and the Philippine National Police. In his letter to Congress, the President cited the security assessment indicating that rebellion still persists in Mindanao and that public safety requires the continuation of martial rule. President Duterte also said terrorist groups such as the Abu Sayyaf Group, Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters or BIFF, and Daula Islamiya continue to defy the government during the extended period of martial law. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufo. Aside from citing the security concerns in Mindanao, a lawmaker said the administration's declaration of martial law has helped bring Mindanao closer to becoming a gun-free society. Lanao del Norte Representative Mohamed Khalid Dimaporo commended the armed forces of the Philippines for intensifying its campaign against loose firearms. Over 5,000 loose firearms have been recovered in Mindanao alone. Dimaporo cited the support gained by the police and military in this campaign with a declaration of martial law in Mindanao. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año noted that martial law has helped the military and the police to do its mandate with the support of the local government units and the people. The Department of Foreign Affairs is monitoring the gun attacks that happened in Brazil and France this Wednesday. Foreign Affairs Assistant Secretary El Mercato said no Filipinos were so far reported to be affected by the shooting. The Philippine Embassy in Brasilia is monitoring the shooting at the Metropolitan Cathedral in the city of Campinas near Sao Paulo. A gunman shot dead five people and wounded several others before killing himself. Meanwhile, the Philippine consulate in Strasbourg is set to report on the shooting incident in Strasbourg, France. Separate reports stated that the shooting advanced towards a Grand Rue, one of the city's main shopping streets. Some areas, including the European Parliament, were placed into lockdown. Election reform advocate and lawyer Glenn Chong has decreed what he called the planned ambush slay of his bodyguard. Chong answered allegations that his aide Richard Santillan is a member of the Highway Boys Group Syndicate who figured in an alleged encounter in Cainta Rizal on December 10. Chong said that based on a video they obtained, Santillan's car was surrounded by police cars, contrary to a report that his aide engaged lawmen in a shootout. He rejected police claims that they found in Santillan's possession three packets of shabu. Chong believes that the firearms and a grenade found near Santillan's body were planted. He has implicated Smartmatic and the Commission on Elections on the incident. Chong earlier exposed the alleged anomaly in the vice presidential race between Lenny Robredo and Bongbong Marcos where he claimed Smartmatic had a hand in the cheating. 
Malacanang thanks the House Majority Leader for addressing the issue on alleged insertions in the 2019 budget. And about half a million Filipino workers are set to undergo digital training. More on these and other news around the metro from Benj Bondo. Malacanang thanked House Majority Floor Leader Rolando Andaya Jr. for addressing the infrastructure allocations allegedly inserted in the proposed national budget for 2019. Andaya debunked Senator Panfilo Lacson's claim that he and House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo have cornered the bulk of congressional insertions. Andaya says Arroyo's district ranks 60th while his own district is in 110th spot in terms of appropriations of the DPWH. The palace assures it will continue to abide with the law in governing the people's hard-earned money. Meanwhile, the Department of Information and Communications Technology targets to train some 500,000 unemployed Filipino workers from the provinces to make them globally competitive digital workers by 2022. The agency will tap local government units outside Metro Manila for the free training of potential digital workers. A magnitude 3.6 earthquake was recorded in Davao Occidental on Tuesday afternoon. FIVOX is not expecting damages or aftershocks from this magnitude 3.6 quake. There were no reported intensities in the area. FIVOX is also not expecting damages and aftershocks from the magnitude 4.2 quake that jolted Surigao del Norte earlier on Tuesday morning. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Still to come, the military says indigenous groups who lack awareness of the new people's army's actions are being targeted by communist rebels. An oil depot project in Mindanao is expected to boost fuel supply and lower pump prices in the region. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Secretary Martin and you're watching. Why uh, do we have a new office office of the Global Media and International Affairs. So, ito ngayon, uh, itong opisina na to, ito yung nakausap sa mga international media, tutulong. So, may kita nyo dito sa loob, marami nang nagawa yung office of the global media, international affairs. And then, yung isang pang rason, kinausap ko yung tayo, kinausap ni Giuliani yung Thai government, yung counterpart ko. At magkakaroon tayo ng sa memorandum of understanding, yung PCO, pati yung counterpart natin ng opisina sa Thailand, para magkaroon tayo ng mga education exchanges, media exchanges, tulungan yung kanilang media, tulungan ng Pilipinas, Pilipinas, tulungan ng Thailand. So yun ang Thailand kung ba tayo. Eh, so far, very successful. At yung panghuli uh, ngayong araw, eh para makita ko kayo. <laughs> The lack of information and awareness on the New People's Army has reportedly made indigenous groups easy targets for recruitment. AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Noel Detallato explains this is why the rebels focus their recruitment efforts in Mindanao. Detallato stresses that their lack of exposure to external information has made indigenous peoples a vulnerable sector. Aside from recruiting IPs to fill up rebel ranks, the military said NPAs are also indoctrinating and supplanting traditional leaders and replacing them with revolutionary ones. The Mindanao Indigenous People's Council of Elders has urged the Commission on Human Rights to start a probe over alleged human rights violations against IPs in the region. The Philippines and the European Union signed an agreement that will improve aviation standards and services between both parties. Here's a report. 
The Philippines and the European Union have recently signed a horizontal aviation agreement in a ceremony in Brussels. The agreement will remove nationality restrictions in bilateral air services agreements between the Philippines and EU member states. The deal will also harmonize standards and provisions in the fields of safety, taxation of aviation fuel, and compatibility with competition rules. Ambassador to Brussels and the European Union Eduardo Jose de Vega highlighted the significance of the agreement, especially for the half a million Filipinos living and working in EU countries. The official visit of Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Luxin Jr. to Brussels last October shows the deepening Philippine-EU relations under President Rodrigo Duterte. European Union Ambassador Nicolaus Marchik was happy with the conclusion of the agreement, while Directorate General for Mobility and Transport Deputy Head Klaus Gill lauded this important step in enhancing international aviation relations. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Maricor Zapata. An up-and-coming oil depot project by Sea Oil Philippines is expected to help cut pump prices in Mindanao. Sea Oil has received its Certificate of Registration from the Board of Investments for its 200 million peso for storage tank oil depot in Davao del Sur. Sea Oil's new facility provides an additional capacity of 36.9 million liters of its existing depot in southern Mindanao, which already has a capacity of storing 41.05 million liters. Meanwhile, Petron Corporation is on track in its expansion plan for its oil refinery complex in Bataan. The BOI notes that these expansion projects in the local oil industry will address increasing fuel demand in the coming years. The municipal government of Kalasyao, Pangasinan will again stage the Puto Festival to boost tourism and sales of its famous product on December 13 to 16. The Puto Festival this year formally opened on December 1 alongside the lighting of the town's first ever Christmas village. The town hopes this year's festival would again promote and increase Puto sales similar to its bid for the Guinness World Records biggest mosaic tilt last year. The main festivities will start with a parade and street dancing and a cook-off featuring Puto by 26 schools. The other activities are Amazing Race, Puto Festival King and Queen, Miss Gay, Volleyball Tournament and Street Party. Two historical icons in Ilocos Norte are set to undergo restoration and soldiers in western Mindanao undergo a surprise drug test. Mourn these stories from the provinces from Janis Cabin. In Ilocos Norte, two of its most important heritage icons will be restored courtesy of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. These are Pauay Church and the Bacara Tower. A total of 45 million pesos has been earmarked for the twin projects to be started next year. The NHCP said restoration may be completed after three years. In Negros Oriental, almost 3 million pesos were lost in a robbery at the main office of the Negros Oriental Electric Cooperative 1 in Tinaogan, Bindoy, Negros Oriental. Noreco 1 officers and employees will undergo investigation to allay suspicions of an inside job. In Zamboanga City, personnel of the Western Mindanao Command Headquarters underwent random drug testing on Monday. The drug test was conducted by the Task Force Moses of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. The surprise test is a regular program of the AFP to ensure that soldiers are drug-free in line with the campaign of President Rodrigo Duterte against illegal drugs. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, the Bureau of Immigration bans a tourist dependent on drugs from entering the country. Big-name rookies sign up for the PBA draft. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. actually great because especially like uh, for us we're just individuals but we actually really need and want to uh, tap into informations like this uh, where the where we can collaborate with the uh, government organizations what they are doing already and what we can do as as part of the citizen of the Philippines right 
pretty much taken aback actually because for the first time it's governments reaching out you know it's not common for government to reach out uh, especially here in the regions even in the Visayas and Mindanao kasi marami akong natutunan marami akong nalalaman regarding sa mga programa ng ating gobyerno particularly sa Duterte administration so ang laking tulong niya lalong lalo na sa mga NSME katulad ko The Bureau of Immigration warns foreigners who are into drugs that they are not welcome in the Philippines. Commissioner Jaime Morente issued the warning after a Swiss drug dependent was barred from entering the country last week. The Swiss identified as Christelle Canitrot reportedly confessed to be dependent on morphine. She talked and behaved strangely upon her arrival at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 from Hong Kong. Canitrot was eventually sent back to Hong Kong and banned from re-entering the Philippines. The Philippines and Bangladesh signed an agreement to develop mutual cooperation in the field of arts, education and culture until the year 2020. Cultural Affairs Secretary Mohammed Nasser Uddin Ahmed and Philippine Ambassador to Bangladesh Vicente Vivencio Pandilio signed the Memorandum of Understanding at the Ministry of Cultural Affairs in the capital. The memorandum aims to provide programs that would broaden cooperation through exchange of cultural and historical information, literature, film, arts, and cultural tropes. The Philippines has kept diplomatic ties with Bangladesh since 1972. A total of 48 players signed up for the Philippine Basketball Association draft at the close of the extended draft application period on Monday. The application period was extended by a week, opening the possibility for graduating UAAP players like Paul Desiderio and Diego Dario to make the jump to the pros. Among the big names headlining the draft classes loaded with guards and wingmen are CJ Perez, Ray Ray Parks, Robert Bollock, and Abu Trater also joining the fray. The applicants are expected to attend the PBA draft combined on Wednesday and Thursday at the Gatorade Hoop Center in Mandaluyong City. The final list of the eligible draft applicants will be released on Friday. Local officials of Marawi City have joined the ranks of those who agree with a proposal to extend martial law in Mindanao. They believe martial law can not only maintain peace and order but also aid in its rehabilitation. Will Nard Barcelona has a story. Despite different reactions from national officials and other sectors, Mindanao Development Authority Secretary Dato Abdul Kair Alonto and Marawi City Mayor Mahul Gandamra shared the same thought about extending the martial law in Mindanao. In an interview, Secretary Alonto, who is also a former elected vice mayor and appointed as acting mayor of Marawi City, noted that he experienced the wrath of martial law during the Marcos time, but he's still pushing for the extension of President Duterte's proclamation of martial law in Mindanao, issued last May 23, 2017. I still have to listen to someone from our areas, in particularly conflicted areas, that he is worried because martial law. In fact, what they have been telling me, dyan na yan, para wala na maghawak ng baril, magdudala ng baril. Secretary Alonto also asserted that if properly used for a good purpose, martial law is a big help not only in Marawi rehabilitation but also in security and development in Mindanao. I am for the extension of martial law, if only to dismantle the private armies. And this is an election time. Take out martial law. I'm telling you, politicians will be moving around with their bodyguards. Tens of them, and all heavily, fire, uh, heavily armed, and in fact, they are more heavily armed than the armed forces. So, kung walang Marcelo, I tell you, magkakaproblema tayo, magbabaril-barilan na naman sila dyan. For his part, Marawi City Mayor Mahul Gandamra noted that they did a series of consultations around and found out that the people of Marawi City are in favor of Marcelo extension in Mindanao. Ang deklarasyon ng Marcelo sa buong Mindanao, lalo na po dito sa Marawi City, ay uh, talaga wala uh, to stabilize the uh, peace 
peace and order situation in our uh, locality, yung uh, pagdiklara ng si Mahala Pangulo ay uh, very timely because of the uh, what had happened to Marawal City. Itong uh, uh, possibility of an extension of martial law ay ang aking uh, mga consequence. So, most of them, karoon lang tayo ng consultation, ay uh, pumapabor kung sa kasakali man na uh, ang ating Mahala Pangulo ay mag-request ng uh, extension of martial law. Marawi City recently concluded its special barangay and Sangguniang Gabataan elections dubbed as the most peaceful elections yet, with not a single election-related fatality recorded, also attributed on the ongoing imposition of martial law in Mindanao. For PNA Newsroom, Wilnard, Barcelona, Philippine Information Agency. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. One more year, Congress votes to grant an extension of martial law in Mindanao. The military says indigenous groups who lack awareness of the New People's Army's actions are being targeted by communist rebels. An election reform advocate slams the alleged ambush to slay of his close aide by policemen. And the Bureau of Immigration bans a tourist dependent on drugs from entering the country. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And it's 13 days to go before Christmas. That's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Moroto. Good day.